Good morning everybody. This is the video you've been waiting for. The drivetrain setup for the Rotary Willys. Let's check it out. Since I started this project, um, the most common questions or statements are um, why are you doing this? How are you going to do it? Or just that's dumb. Rotaries don't make any torque. Blah blah blah. So um, I'll try to go through it quickly. Um, why am I doing it? Because um, I can basically. Uh, I already did the TDI willies, so if I wanted a diesel Jeep, I already have one. It's my second one. Um, and nobody's done it before, so I want to do something new. This is not meant to be practical in any way. None of these are. We're car guys. We build stuff because it's fun or entertaining. So um, are there going to be challenges? Definitely. Uh, are there more practical swaps? Sure. Are there stuff that's better documented? Yes. Um, but I chose a rotary because I've always thought they're cool. Um, they have their pros and cons just like any other engine, but it's more of just an experiment and I wanted to try something different. So that's my main um, reason for doing this. So the torque debate. Um, rotaries are not inherently known for their torquey low end power, um, but if you've ever driven a flat fender, neither are L134s. They have a power band that um, is good for crawling in the woods, but they're terrible on the road. Um, that's why people put overdrives on them. They have a um, pretty low rev limit. They make all their torque right off an idle, which is excellent, um, but they have no horsepower and um, they're very limited on road speed because of the RPMs. So uh, the rotary has a lot of horsepower compared to the L134. Um, I'm running a 13B, which is close to 150 horsepower, but it's very high up in the RPM. So that's where people kind of lose this swap in their mindset. On a good day, a Go Devil is rated at 60 horsepower and I think around 105 foot-pounds of torque. So I've looked at a bunch of dyno charts um, and all the ones I've seen, most of them are putting out 30 to 40 horsepower at the wheels and around 60 to 75 foot-pounds of torque to the wheels. So that's not very good. So when we're comparing apples to apples, um, the rotary, although the RPM range is different, the numbers are better, but paper doesn't really matter to me. It's it's drivability. So let's talk about how I'm gonna combat that. First, let's talk about specs. Road weight, that means it's ready to drive at 2315. The car I took the engine out of weighs around 3,000 pounds. It's a 91 Mazda, um, it's the FC version of the RX-7. So it's a little bit chunkier than this, but it's geared completely different. The Jeep axles have 538 gears. And in, in stock them. form, they max out around 60 miles an hour, which is, about 3800 rpm without an overdrive my goals for this build are to have a vehicle that really tops out around 60 but has lots of power and gear options up to that speed because if you've driven these you know they're really not that fun on the highway and that's not my intended goal even the diesel jeep with the overdrive this thing will do 75 miles an hour but i never go that fast so enough of me blabbing what's the drivetrain setup what are the specs let's go over the last couple days, I got the rotary sitting in the frame of the willies, so you can see roughly where it's going to sit. Um, so this is the 13B. It's about 18 inches long from the front to the bell housing. It's a very compact engine. Um, and here's the question you've all been asking. What transmission am I going to be using? I'm using the Mazda 5-speed that came behind the uh, rotary engine. The beauty of that is it has a decent first gear. It has overdrive, and I don't need any adapter. But it's way too long. You can't do that in a Jeep. Watch me. So, the beauty of this setup is, since the engine is so small, I'm moving it forward as much as I can. So the radiator used to sit right here on the with the four-cylinder. So I'm removing the radiator. We're going to get a different radiator, trim this, move it forward, so I have the engine forward as far as possible and you can see how much easier it is to work on here so this you can see it kind of looks weird but it's all going to work out so by keeping the five speed um, I'm able to retain the starter flywheel clutch everything that was on the Mazda these transmissions hold up fine to the power output of these this engine is going to stay basically stock so it should survive just fine um, I have two different transmissions um, options that are off of different rotary engines. So the first gear um, is about three and a half to one, which is better than a T93 speed. Um, so it's still going to work fine for this purpose. The shallow height of this engine is also a benefit and the very small oil pan. So I'll still have lots of differential clearance 
and I can position the engine exactly where I need it and still stay under the height of the hood. The alternator is going to be the highest point on this vehicle. Even after the fuel system's on and the air cleaner, it should clear just so fine. So that's a two-wheel drive transmission. Is this going to be a two-wheel drive Jeep? I don't think so. So then the next challenge is how do I adapt this two-wheel drive transmission to a four-wheel drive transfer case? So then I found through some Googling that back in the 60s and 70s they made a divorced Spicer 18 transfer case. So I picked up one of these little guys from Advanced Adapters. This turns your normal uh, Willys transfer case into a divorced setup. But then I thought, gross, I'm going to be stuck with that measly 2.4 to 1 uh, final ratio for crawling. With that 3.5 to 1 Mazda first gear, it's going to put me about a stock uh, CJ2 crawl ratio which is no bueno for me. So then I thought, well, I'll get a hold of my buddy Jeff and get another set of X98 gears, those uh, 5 to 1 gears that you saw me um, using earlier in the fall. The 5 to 1 gears will put me up to about 94 to 1, which is exactly what the 4-speed setup was in this. So that would be a pretty good crawl ratio. But then I thought, I still have the problem of the rotary making peak power from like 3,500 RPM up to 6,000. So on the road, with a 1 to 1 transfer case and 5th gear, it's not really going to be ideal because it's not a highway speed vehicle. I want it to be in the power band, you know, between 30 and 60 miles an hour. So I started to brainstorm, how can I get a good crawl ratio, a better um, RPM at cruising speed in high range, and keep a divorce transfer case? Anybody figured out where I'm going with this yet? Hmm. If you guessed Suzuki Samurai transfer case, you're right. So in the 80s and 90s, the Suzuki Samurai, the old square boxy Jeep looking thing, had a five-speed transmission, a divorced transfer case, and an 80 or a 79-inch wheelbase. So it's super similar to the Jeep, but it had a tr uh, divorced transfer case. And the best part is there's tons of aftermarket support and really cool gear options and accessories for the Suzuki transfer case. So that's why I chose to go that route. So the thing that really made the Suzuki transfer case attractive to me was that it has a reduced high range when you go with the lower gear sets. So with the current setup, I have here, which I'm going to show you in a second, I'll have a 122 to 1 crawl ratio and a 1.7 uh, to 1 reduction in high range. With combination of the 538 axle gears and the 1.7 high range, um, basically it's like running 9 to 1 axle gears, which means at 60 miles an hour, the rotary is going to be right where it needs to be. It's about 4,500, 4,200 RPM at 60 miles an hour. So. I'll be shifting a lot more and their gears are going to be feel close together but this thing's going to be in the power band and then I still have that great crawl ratio. So when it comes to the question of torque and off-roading, um, at 122 to 1 with a 2,000 pound vehicle and the 31 inch tall NDTs, um, I don't feel the rotary is going to have any trouble keeping it spinning. Now this is an experiment, I don't know, I've never driven a 122 to 1 crawl ratio rotary engine. so. It might stall every time you try to go, but just from my experience with gearing, um, I think it's going to do just fine. So let me show you the bits and pieces and how they're going to go in this. Before we get too far, I want you to check out uh, Zooks Off-Road. They help me out with some of these parts. Um, they have tons of Samurai stuff and they're really good customer service to work with. So here it is. This is an 89 Samurai transfer case. This is a used one I got off Marketplace with the help of uh, several friends to uh, relay it back to me here in Pennsylvania. Um, so it's a super compact design. Um, it is narrower than the Spicer 18 with the divorce setup. So the input from the transmission is here. This goes to your front axle and this goes to your rear axle. So very similar layout to a Spicer 18 aside from being divorced. Um, we're going to couple that with the trail gear six and a half to one um, reduction transfer case gears. So this will give me a uh, six and a half to one low range and a 1.7 high range. We're also adding the Zooks Off-Road um, Siamese Twin Stick Shifter Kit. We've got new flange nuts from them and a full rebuild kit. So this thing's going to be fresh and new. Another thing to take into account when you're going with that low of a gear ratio is strength. Um, the rotary is not super high power, but anytime you go low gears like that, you're putting stress on things. So we're going to add this um, girdle here. So this goes through the bolts of the transfer case, and it's going to give me places to weld my, or weld my mounts on as well. Another thing I hear a lot of is, oh, the drive shaft's going to be too small. They're all small. 
get over it. <laughs> this is the current drive shaft I run with the four speed. It's 10 inches from U-joint to U-joint. And by moving the rotary engine forward and going with the divorced case and the smaller uh, physical size of the rotary engine compared to the L134, um, According to my calculations, my drive shaft will be almost identical. So I'll make, um, I'll have it adapted to fit the uh, input of or the output of the Samurai case. So yeah, it's going to be small. Uh, the beauty of the offset transfer case is that when you cock this just right, it brings your drive shaft angle down to almost flat since the Jeep isn't lifted. And uh, I know you're stressed about it, but it's going to be just fine. Just a little baby drive shaft. No worries. So that's the drivetrain side of thing. Let's talk about uh, the engine and some fueling stuff. As I said before, this is a 91 uh, Mazda 13B. So this is the, not the newest one, but it's it's uh, from an FC. So it would have been like 89 to 91, I believe was this model. So it was fuel injected with electronic ignition. Um, but it's a pretty good motor and it has a little bit tougher tranny than the old carbureted engines. Um, so I'm going to replace uh, the ignition with a distributor style ignition from an older rotary engine. So it'll have uh, regular coils and probably some aftermarket igniters uh, to operate them. Originally this engine had a very complex fuel injection system with lots of emissions um, items and vacuum lines um, and these crusty old injectors. So we're gonna delete those. Uh, we're also going to delete the oil injection and run pre-mixed gas like you would in a two-stroke. So we're going to use the racing beat intake that has a holly flange on it for a four-barrel carb, but we're not going carbureted. You probably already saw it when I showed you the transfer case, but definitely need fuel injection. Um, if you follow me, you know I like to off-road, and anytime you get carburetors on angles and bumpy roads, they give you trouble. So we're going to go with this Phytec fuel injection system. Um, this is similar to a Holly Sniper, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper and it has all the same features. So it has a little screen, it's self-learning, um, it has all the sensors built right into the unit, uses a wideband oxygen sensor, and these are pretty well documented um, for use with rotary engines and all different kinds of conversions. So um, so that needs a you know electronic fuel pump and some other things, but very minimal wiring, and it's a much cleaner setup than the original fuel injection on the rotary engine. Here's a quick little view of the drivetrain I took out. So even though this is a four-cylinder um, with a truck transmission, you know it's still extremely long. So that's why my rear drive shaft was so short. So you know the, you're not counting the PTO. You're going from the back of the transfer case. Then you have the transfer case. Since I'm running an SM420, I have this adapter, which is almost six inches. Then I have about a foot long transmission, bell housing, and the engine. And this engine is about seven inches longer than the rotary. So I'm over 60 inches from the crank pulley to the rear output, um, even with the, uh, the original setup that I was running. So while the rotary with the five speed is long, um, it's coming out very close. I think with with the coupler shaft I need for the transmission, I'm around 63 inches, um, but I am sliding the whole drivetrain forward. So um, it's all going to work out. Uh, there'll be challenges along the way, but you can't let that stop you from uh, doing projects. So that's it. You're all up to speed. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm waiting on some items to come in the mail. I need my uh, motor mounts and transmission mounts. So once those get here, um, start fabbing this up. Once I get the motor locked into place, it's going to go really fast. So with any swap, all the little stuff at the end does take up time and money. Um, but I'm pretty excited to get to this point and uh, just kind of see this vision uh, coming true and uh, coming together. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to work out and I think it's going to be pretty, pretty unique. So thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for updates and uh, let me know if you have any questions or want to see anything specifically. I appreciate your support and always watching the videos and commenting. So that's it for today. Catch you later.